Hello, this is Dr. Douglas Husbands of Holistic Health Bay Area. Today I want to talk about leaky gut involvement in mold-associated illness. The pathway through our GI tract is essentially the transition between the external environment of our physical surroundings and the internal environment of our body. All microbes, namely molds, yeast, bacteria, and viruses, larger molecular structures, particularly protozoa and parasites, foreign toxins, and also macromolecules of foods in the external environment are gaining potential exposure to our internal environment via our GI tract. Indeed, it's imperative to recognize that the simple columnar epithelium is essentially a one-cell thick barrier between the external environment and our entire internal environment via the blood vessels just underneath the simple columnar epithelial intestinal lining. Is it any wonder then that 70% of our immune system is found within this lining and layers of the GI tract? Therefore, whenever there is transient or chronic hyperpermeability of the GI tract, otherwise known as leaky gut, there is potential for significant immunological manifestations throughout the body. Now, I mentioned transient gut hyperpermeability as well as chronic for a reason. To illustrate this point, let me first give you a little background from research by Dr. Alessio Fasano and Dr. Jeremy Nicholson. Dr. Fasano, in his seminal paper in the early 2000s, clearly defined the specific mechanisms which are involved in leaky gut. In that paper and subsequent published research, we've come to see that various stressors can open up the normally tight junctions between the simple columnar epithelial cells lining the gut. Stressors not only biological but also emotional. For instance, if you have an argument with your spouse, the emotional stress temporarily impairs the GI tract lining tight junctions towards becoming leaky. Other significant emotional stress makes the gut lining leaky. Gluten always damages the tight junctions between the cells of the GI tract lining. The more frequent the gluten exposure, the more cumulative the damage. Exposure to molds and microtoxins, especially in genetically predisposed individuals, can cause temporary gut hyperpermeability though more often the damage is long-term, even with low-dose short-term exposure to water-damaged buildings, as Dr. Richie Shoemaker has so exquisitely detailed. From Dr. Nicholson's recent research into the microbiome, temporary changes in our gut microflora, for instance from the use of any antibiotic or corticosteroid, can induce transient damage to the GI tract lining's tight junctions. With enough of these temporary hits to, to the GI tract tight junctions, you can have a constant barrage of antibodies produced that open up the lining, whereby the immune system is being overwhelmed, fighting off perturbations from ex the external environment, resulting in chronic leaky gut. As a result of short-term and long-term damage to the gut lining, the immune system can be induced to produce antibodies against our own tissues. Leaky gut can incite antibody production not just against tissues in the gut, but also against all types of tissues in the body. This is what occurs in autoimmune disease. Some autoantibodies familiar to many are thyroperoxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies which attack the thyroid cells. Increased permeability or leaky gut can also induce antibody production against foreign molecules. If these foreign molecules happen to be normal healthy foods, we can start to experience increased sensitivities due to antibodies being produced against these foods. Leaky gut can impair our immune response to greater sensitivity to mold and mycotoxins. 
in cases of repeated exposure by those without genetic susceptibility to almost undetectable levels of mold and their produced mycotoxins, a hormone called melanocyte stimulating hormone, or MSH, can latch onto the cells in the intestinal lining, damaging the tight junctions and initiate a chronic inflammatory response. It's even worse with those with genetic susceptibility. They can have a chronic inflammatory response with just one significant exposure to a water-damaged building that once induced can be difficult to turn off.